Hello, Mr. Red here. I got a little situation right now. Today is March 29th, Sunday, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Got a little situation back here. Look at this. This hive is getting ready to swarm. Look at this. Wow. I mean, it's it, she's coming out very shortly. This hive right next to it, they, they swarmed two days ago. Caught them there. The queen is in the little nuke right there. And then I split them with cells in that one right there. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and see if we can capture this swarm even before they leave. By the grace of God, <laughs> we're going to have two more hives in just a few more minutes. Let's wrangle, huh? Hopefully I got that camera set so that y'all can see all the action. And, and what I'm usually going to do is I'm going to look first just on the face of the board to see if our queen is already out here. And I don't see the bees are, they're steady coming out right now. So the first thing I do to kind of like to slow them down is I remove this top box. I take away half the bees right away. And I know there's going to be swarm cells in here. So the queen leaves like two days, a day, a few minutes right before those other queens start to hatch. So we do want to work kind of fast at this point. So I just move this box, take half the bees away immediately and it kind of like slows it down pretty drastically. So let's go ahead and move this box off of here. I forgot my hot tool. <laughs> All right, I'm back. So I'm gonna pop this lid and then I'm gonna remove this box. I've got my bottom board already set up over there. We're going to just move this off of there and it's full, honey, because it weighs like 50 pounds. All right. Part one is done. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that hod. I'm going to be looking for my queen or queen cells or both. <laughs> I do have my queen catcher in case I do see her. And I certainly hope I do, because ideally we're going to want to catch her and move her off of there. You're not going to believe this, but when this hive started to swarm the other day, same scenario as this, exact same. Came out here, the bees were covered the face of it. I set up the new stand over there, and <laughs> as, I, as I was looking for the queen here, I didn't see her. So I finished setting up my box over here. I turn around and look again and I see the queen come out. She started running up the board right here and I had my suit on and I looked for my queen cage and I didn't see it. So, <laughs> so what I did was I took off my glove. As I took off my glove, she flew up in the air and I swooped down and I caught her with my bare hand. I went into the honey house, got another queen cage, put her in it and did a three-way split on that one. So who knows, maybe maybe we can get another three-way split on this one. That would be good. But I mean, there's plenty, plenty of bees in this. All right, I don't see her out there. Now this was, this was a swarm that I caught last year. So it's last year's bees. And here they are, a year later. They're fixing to take off once more. So, good bees here. I couldn't tell you where the swarm came from since I caught so many last year. Oh, before I keep on talking about this, the rooster and I, you know, we have that little competition. Well, even before the competition starts every year, we agree we do not count swarms that we take out of our own yard. So even though we do, I'm doing these splits, cost splits among bees, they're not even part of that equation. So let's just put that little room at a rest. So a bunch of pollen and just full, full, full of nectar. Now the difficult part about looking for a queen at this point, because we know this is going to be the old queen 
that flies out of here. For her to be able to fly, she got to go on a diet. Or at least she's got to stop laying for a few days for her abdomen to shrink down a little bit so she can get her flying weight. And so she'll shrink down a little bit. And it may be a little bit more difficult to spot her. But regardless, as long as you see that little crown, you got her. There's uncapped brood in here. Trust me, when you split this hive like we did, whew, you take a lot of energy away from the bees. And when it gets this close to swarm time, you have to do something pretty drastic to stop those energies because it's intense. And you saw I didn't smoke these bees because I really didn't want to. I didn't want to hamper them in that way. But you can see they're pretty gentle. Now when I move that box over there, she could have very well still be in that box. So once we go through this hive looking for her, then we're going to go into the other one. Because we have to find that queen. One, one way or another, this hive is going to swarm. And we're just trying to prevent that as well as the loss of our honey production from them. So, I mean, I'm this far along into it and I haven't seen her yet. Nor have I seen any cells, swarm cells, or superseding cells. Got three frames left. And I'm starting to think she's in our other box. Oh, they're running in here. Let me look, look again. There she is. All right, I saw her. Oh, there she is, right here. There's our queen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. She is a beauty. And she's a little bit smaller, but she certainly looks large enough to me. All right. Let's go look in that other box and see what we got in there, see if we can do a three-way split or if we're just going to do a single split. So our queen is camped out on the other hive right now. I'm going to go through this one real quick, just checking to look for swarm cells, superseding cells, something. Oh my gosh. You know, here it is, March 29th, and the production of of the honey and building of comb is, uh, I mean, it's in full force. And these girls, it's very obvious for this. Uh, there's brand new comb up in here. And like when I told you I lifted up the box, it probably weighed 50, 60 pounds or more. I don't remember now. But it's heavy. So I know this, this box is full of honey. And uh, when I pull out these frames, I'm going to show you um, <laughs> what these new, new drawn out comb is looking like. By the way, uh, yesterday, which was the 28th, um, as I was walking the field right right behind me, in that field, there's already privet blooming. So we're, as far as bloom of privet, we're three weeks early for that, and there it is, it's blooming. But there's so much stuff blooming because our, our winter has been so mild. Let's go ahead and go through these frames, and we're looking for swarm cells or superseding cells, either one. Plus, I'm gonna show you, I mean, just on this, outside frame I can see capped honey just from the top of this so you can tell the white of this comb this is all brand new comb and this is freshly capped honey right in here let's go see what else is in there huh frame full of nectar some capped honey nectar and pollen All right, the next frame is all brewed. It's old brood. I see a, a cup right there, but it's not a cell. 
And then all this brood right here. Got some drone. There's a little drone mixed in there with the worker drone bee, uh, with the worker comb. It's kind of nice not having to go through this box looking for my queen. I can't pull them apart anymore because the comb is crazy in there. It's woven together. And I tore the first section and I don't want to expose any honey. Unfortunately, I did not see a cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my queen, my old queen, into this box. I want to get her off of that box. And in that box, there was plenty enough brood in there for them to make another emergency cell for, those, for them to have another queen. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop the queen. I'm going to release the queen into this box right here. By releasing her into this box, taking away all those bees over there, it's going to lessen the likelihood of her wanting to swarm. And I'll add another super to this box as well as that box. And that box, since all the bees, all the field bees that are in this box right now, they'll go over there. The number of bees in here will decrease. She'll start laying again. The numbers will start building up. They'll hopefully make another queen. I'll check that in 10 days to make sure I got cells in there. And after that, everything is good. So that's all, all I got for you in this little quick video here. Saving, saving uh, the bees before they swarm out and doing a split. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Red, I'm out of here until the next video. <laughs> Who doesn't like happy endings, huh? So yesterday when I did that split on this hive right here, I didn't have any queen in this box or cells to, to put in there. I'm working the, the bees in the field directly behind this. And as I'm going through it, I had another one that, look at that, had a beautiful, a beautiful cell on it. So I'm just going to drop this one in there. And now those girls, they're going to have their own mama. I'm just going to put it in the top box. It really doesn't matter. I won't have to go all the way and disturb those bees down there again. But they're going to be quite happy to get that one right there. That is a beautiful cell. As long as you knock all the bees off the frame that you took that box, took it from the box, you're good. All right. Now we really do have a good split.